All right, guys, let's check out the Seiko Tuna. This is the SBBN 049er. This is a newer version or the most recent version versus the older ones like the SBBN 031 that I have here. This one's not mine. Neither of these are mine, actually. Uh, this, this guy here was uh, loaned in by Jeff McMahon. I'll put a link to his YouTube channel down below. You can check it out. Tell him I said hi, all that good stuff. He's a Seiko-holic, like a lot of us are. And even though I've kind of dipped in and out, I feel like I'm having a, you know, second coming or a 12th or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm like feeling some Seiko models right now where I might even buy some more. And I was about to say that I don't actually own a Tuna, but I thought about this. I actually do own a Tuna. It's just been out of my possession for so long. So I sent it in to have like a Sapphire Crystal done and that didn't fit, you know, because you're not dealing with OEM parts. And then, thankfully, the watchmaker that I had selected to do that work discovered that there was a problem with the movement. So they sent the watch over to Seiko, or he sent it over to Seiko, and they're hopefully fixing it or replacing the movement or something. I don't know. They've had it for a few months, so hopefully I'll get that back soon. It's actually just a more of a standard SBBN 031, I think, or it might be the metal. I can't remember which one it even was because it was such a short amount of time that I actually had it. But anyway, let's talk about this watch now that we're a minute and a half in. So SBBN 049er gets you the stainless steel bezel insert. Really love that look. I mean, there's not too many tunas that I don't like, honestly. But the case size on this, I'm going to give you a couple dimensions on the top side here. So the absolute width of it with this angled shroud that's on there is 47 and a half millimeter. If you measure it at the bezel, which is typically what your eye really sees, it's only 40.8 millimeter. So 41-ish. The lug-to-lug -lug is shorter than even the shroud. So the lug-to-lug -lug is only 44 and a half, and those are drilled lugs, of course. Thickness, 14 millimeter from the case back to the top of the bezel. The sapphire crystal, which is single-domed, you can see that distortion there, but it's a, it's a little tricky. So it's a sapphire crystal. It's flat on the top, and I said it's single domed because it is single domed on the underside with AR coating. Still gives it that weird distortion, but it's flat on top, unlike some of the older Hardlex ones, which were bubbled. They were still single domed, but they were bubbled on the top. This one's on the underside. Still 14 mil thick, 22 millimeter lug width there, which some might say it's like 21 and a half. I've had no problem putting 22 millimeter bracelets in there. So it's 22. This factory bracelet tapers down to 18 and it has the Marine Master style adjustable on the fly. You just kind of pull this up and then it releases this bar here and then you can adjust it and then it'll go back in. Much like handcuffs, not that I know anything about that, how they will go tighter but not looser. So, and then it just folds over four micro adjusts, double pushers here. Quite a bit of thickness added in this clasp with that extra mechanism there. I don't think it's any secret that I'm actually not a fan of this clasp. I, I get it. I understand why people appreciate it. I'm just not personally a fan. It is cool, but it was cool, you know, 10 years ago. Like it's time to do better, I think, personally. So seven millimeter screw down crown on this, plenty of traction on this. It's oversized and it's, you know, not really darted other than just kind of the cutout there from the shroud. So easy enough to access. You can unscrew that, you pop that out, you can adjust the, well, here, let's just do it. So of course it'll hack this quartz movement, which is a 7C46 high torque, pretty accurate movement. It uh, is accurate to like plus minus 15 second per month. So you're not going to have any problems there. Nice, no wobble to it. Go ahead and push it in. It's going to start that quartz movement again. And then, of course, you have your day date at the 3 o'clock. And there is still a loom plot there. So, And that's part of them keeping their ISO certification for saturation diving because this is a 300-meter water depth rating on this. Weighing in size for Jeff's wrist, not my wrist, which is larger. Jeff's is larger wrist than mine. With this bracelet, it weighs in at 194 grams, so just a shy under 200 gram, kind of portly on this one for the weight. I mean, if you have it on the silicone strap like this guy, it's much lighter. And here it is next to the SBBN 031. Pretty much kind of the same watch overall. I mean, pretty similar. They're both tough as nails. 
Um, this guy here with the hard legs actually does have some scratches on the hard legs. So um, the other thing is on the dial, you'll notice that this guy still says Marine Master Professional 300. You know what? I do kind of miss that. This dial's fine. I actually like the font of the Seiko, the the in the printed on indexes, and I'm even grown to like the handset on the new one more than the old one. I didn't think I would, but I do. Um, I like them both. I could see if you were a fan of the Seiko Tuna where you would probably own one of the previous gens and the current gens and maybe even go back. There's more if you go back in the catalog. These go back quite a ways. There's quite a few to venture into if you're into vintage watches, which I am not. So, But you can still find these you know, used good condition, this, these SBVN 031s. You can find them used good conditions or you can potentially even find new, like new old stock. Price tag on these have went up versus the older ones. The Nomen, I looked up Nomen. I'm not going to put a link in the description because I'm not affiliated with them. If they want to work with me, then I'll start plugging them more. But um, their price is $1,440. So not bad, not bad. It's not cheap. They're not giving them away, right? This isn't, you know, that's not chump change. That's still a lot of money. You're talking just shy of $1,500. I was wearing my Alpinist in case you were wondering. So let me zoom in on this and then I'll give you a wrist shot. I'm trying to get this zoom all figured out for you guys so it's still in focus because I am shooting in 4K now. Hopefully that's improved. But you can see just a, a beautiful, clean, heavy duty dive watch that we're never going to dive with. But you could. You could do some serious diving with this, but you can definitely do uh, whatever you want to do with these things and they'll hold up. They'll take some marks. I can show you some marks on this other one. The shroud has taken a, a ding to it. The crystal has a scratch on it. But this guy's going to be even tougher with that sapphire. You can see that second hand hitting those marks. Perfect. That's a high torque motor, so it just pops right into place. Probably my um, my favorite quartz movement from Seiko would be the 7C46 uh, because it's only put in the tunas. It's not put in any other watch. So it's only for the tunas. I think that's very cool, unique. I mean, I love the Grand Seiko 9F Quartz as much, uh, close to as much as this, but this one nudges it out a little bit more for me just because it is, I don't know, it's, it's just crazy. It's not, you know, uh, a quartz movement that they designed to go across a, a wide range of watches. It's very specific just for the tuna. I dig that. 120. 120 click, I gotta slow down. 120 click bezel on this guy. Very smooth, Seiko like. No problems there. Nice amount of resistance. Not loose like you can feel like on some of the newer monsters. This feels exactly like the old one. So it's perfect. All right, let's zoom back out. I'll pop this guy on wrist so you can see what that looks like. Again, bracelet's not sized for my wrist, but you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. The tunas are big watches, but they wear so good, guys. Um, easily, like, I'm serious, no lie, like, six and a half inch wrist, you could probably still pull one of these off. I think you would be good to go. Shockingly, the offset crown, the sh super short lug to lug, only 44 and a half. Yes, it's still a taller, bigger watch, but I'm telling you, you'd be able to pull it off. Whether it's on bracelet or the, um, you know, the strap or something, you put it on these silicone straps and you can easily get it nice and snug around your wrist. Let's kill the lights and check the loom on this. The loom on tunas are like the best Seiko loom out there, period. And I, I kind of feel like the older one actually is a touch brighter. I could be wrong. You guys, you know, what do you think there? I mean, they're close. It's so nominal, the difference, I think. But uh, maybe I'm just rooting for the underdog. I don't know. It's, it just seems like it's a touch brighter. They're both just epically bright, though, and super long-lasting. You know what I did notice, though? I do like the uh, full triangle on the older one versus the pip on the newer one. I like the full triangle. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next bit.